Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Victor Fernando de Alba. I'm part of the plant community, uh, and um, I uh, uh, part of the Bolto team, and which is going to be the default uh, front end for Plum Six. And I would like in this presentation to uh, talk about how does Plum Six work internally, because. Uh, uh, we are moving from uh, uh, the classic uh, single monolithic SSR uh, model that Plone 5 and its processors were. And we are uh, using uh, our React, uh, JavaScript, uh, server-side rendered uh, front-end in front of uh, Plone. And this uh, brings some uh, a lot of uh, yeah, questions on how this really worked, right? So I would like to to make a quick uh, hands-on, let's say, uh, on how this uh, Plum Six is going to work under the hood. So here is uh, Plum Five, right? So it's the classic way of uh, monolithic uh, frameworks and servers. So you have a process that is running uh, on Python. And uh, this um, uh, this monolithic server is is doing all the work, right? This is uh, uh, getting the content from the database, then uh, making the calculations that is required, uh, calculate also the the other template engine, how it should look like, and then it shows it it sends the HTML to the uh, to the client that has requested a page, for example. Uh, Plone 6 works in uh, uh, a little bit different. So we still have uh, the classic Python uh, powered uh, process on the back, which is still Plone. And we, we, we will call it from now on Plone 6, the classic server side render. Uh, but we still uh, we have a new component, which is the Bolto uh, server side render. Is the the new Node.js Express app that allows us to uh, server side rendering the front end, so CEO and uh, other uh, other uh, services that require uh, that the content is not being uh, rendered by the client. So uh, gets the 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 actual data into into those services. So again, what is SSR? From now on, we will use this abbreviation. SSR is server side render. Uh, it allows uh, how it's done. Volto, it's that it's an isomorphic app. The, this this means that some code, the same code, uh, runs on the client and on the server. Uh, this allows the this this uh, feature allows to write only one uh, one code, one feature, and then this code is being generated both on the server and in the client. So it generates the first request HTML page. Uh, so and, and as I said, this is good for for CEO for for uh, crawler web crawlers uh, of uh, uh, search engines that then will uh, make that our page is going to be uh, rendered uh, properly, and then the crawler is going to get all the information, the same information in fact that the that the client will have rendered uh, in our browser. Right? It also serves their static resources for loading the app in the client and does some other things in Bolto. <clears throat> so how, how it works. So we have to differentiate before the, uh, between the first request and the rest of the request that comes after the first request. And this first request will mean, I mean by when you reload the page. So when you reload the page, this first request that is happening uh, is that your uh, browser, your client, is going to ask the Plone 6 uh, SSR server, the Volto SSR server. And uh, the Volto SSR server is going to, to call in this dash number is going to make all the REST API calls to the Plone 6 classic server-side rendering. 
engine and the blow in the back end is going to answer the via JSON uh, with the results of these calls. Uh, um, which ones, uh, which calls uh, does the uh, Volto server does? So like it does the main one, which is asking for the content, the current content. It does other calls like uh, the breadcrumbs, the navigation, the content types that are uh, allowed in this in that content, amongst other other calls that Volto requires. So uh, Volto is going to make all these calls in the server, not on your client, in the server, and it's going to ask the blown backend via REST API, and the uh, REST API is going to return the answer, and then. Uh, the uh, Volto server-side render process is going to process all this uh, information. It's going to render the page, and it's going to return the page into the browser, which will be the, the number four, right? What happens from there? So uh, this this uh, this process is is quite quick. And we are going to have uh, the, the browser. The only thing that sh that uh, should have is to read this uh, static page that is going to well, static uh, the, this HTML page that is going to answer the server and load it. Right. So after the first request, uh, after we have this uh, HTML and <laughs> all the resources are loaded, the JavaScript client app takes over. And the server side render is not used anymore, right? Unless you reload the page. It, this this uh, process is called uh, in in JavaScript uh, jargon is is called hydration. So it's it's when, as I said, is when you receive the first request uh, in HTML and all the resources, and then the browser loads that these resources upon upon this uh, HTML and hydrates makes uh, the JavaScript live on this uh, HTML, right? Then from uh, this point over, when you click uh, on other or on a link of the router or you change the route via uh, some link or whatever, then after hydration, the client as I said, takes over, and we don't need the Volto server-side rendering anymore. Then our client, this Volto that is loaded in our browser, is going to take over and is going to make the calls, the REST API calls, right? Uh, yeah. Then what happened in Plum 6 in production? So in Plum 6 in production, uh, we have this both process. Uh, remember, we have the classic uh, clones uh, process in the in the server. Still, we, we we are not going to lose that because it's the backend. It's the backend for for uh, for the client for the JavaScript client, right? And it can run in a port uh, as usual. In for example, in the nine thousand and one, but we will also need this Node.js process running. On, a, on another port that will be the Volto server side rendering, the Plum 6 front end server side render part that could run, let's say, in the uh, 11,001. <clears throat> then we have to make them available because, as we said before, we need that our client uh, reach both the back end and the front end, right? And uh, then what, what we will make is using Nginx uh, reverse proxy or the reverse proxy of your liking, you need to point the main uh, URL of your site towards the server side rendering of the Bolt or the, the Plone 6 front end. And also you have to make this uh, the, the classic uh, Plone 6 classic as a server side rendering uh, Python process also uh, available because your browser is going to ask for it under the hood via XHR request, right? So we will we can put it wherever we want, but uh, yeah, uh, for example, in HTTPS as uh, uh, slash slash uh, API. 
and both need to be accessible. So that's what uh, why we are doing. We are do, we normally the recommended option is to use the same virtual host because then we will avoid cost issues. Both can be scaled horizontally, how, man, how many processes that we want, provided the ability that we put on the front, the balancers and, and the infrastructure necessary to balance, balance the load between them, right? Um, we also use a process manager of, of uh, our choice, the, of your choice, uh, which can be like PM2 or SystemD or SupervisorD. Uh, to manage these these two uh, processes, right? Then I want to also to talk about a new feature that is uh, upcoming in Volta 13, which will be the next uh, major version that will see the light in the next uh, weeks. That is that uh, you no longer require to have your uh, your classic uh, API, the backend server, the Python process in another uh, directory, right, in another path. You can have the same, both uh, the Volta server side render and the Plone 6 classic server side rendering under the same uh, uh, umbrella in the same uh, virtual host, which will be this diagram, right? As I said, now, now, right now, it's not possible. It's going to be a feature of uh, Volta 13, and it requires a little bit of uh, additional engine configuration for correct routing. But it's going to be the default for developing, uh, yeah, in Volta 13. And what happened in Plone 6 in development? Uh, in local development, you're going to have uh, this. Uh, you, you also need to have the two processes running for sure. You're going uh, by default. You're going to have in localhost 3000 the Plone 6 front end server side rendering, the Node.js process, and you're going to have also the classic uh, Plone Python process in in the way. Uh, you don't have to configure because Volta comes with a, a internal proxy for development. So uh, and is pointing to this uh, default uh, localhost 8080 slash Plone. By default, but you can change to whatever uh, uh, site that you're developing or, or match to your developing likings, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, by default, uh, this proxy is pointing, yeah, as I said, to this uh, URL and their localhost 3000 API. As a, and again, from Plone 6, there is going to be this slight change that by default, the development is going to use seamless mode. So both uh, the uh, Node.js, the Volto uh, server side rendering is going to uh, share the same uh, localhost 3000, but the internal proxy will, will take care, right? So you don't have to uh, take care of anything, right? Yeah, and that's it. Uh, yeah, um, I hope that uh, this uh, talk will have uh, show some light into uh, into the, how Plone Six works. And uh, happy to hear and uh, see you soon.